I'm at Green K Wetlands in South Florida. And there are a few people who have told me that there are a lot of painted buntings around here. So I'm gonna go see if I can find some painted buntings. But they have these feeders out front. There's one here and there's one over there. So if you ever make your way to Green K in search of painted buntings, there's a female one over right here in this side. Oh here. god, one just fell in front of her. There's painted buntings all over these feeders. Um, I got some good shots, and there's one actually over here on this palm front. I wonder if I can get video. I'm gonna see if I can get video of that little. So I'm zoomed in on this bunting. Look. Check out the settings on the video. I had it at 1 80th of a second for the shutter speed. Um, the aperture was f5.6 with an ISO of a thousand. These little painted buntings were hanging out in some really dark shadows, so I had to do everything I could to really bring out the light. And he's just sitting there, I got some great video. And here's the end result. And as you can see, the Nikon D500 handled all those settings quite well. Look at all the bright colors on this bird. It's really easy to see why it's called a painted bunting. It looks like it's been hand painted. And this is a male, by the way. The females, a kind of a, a lime green or a soft green color. And here are some still shots. What an amazing looking bird. Look at all of the color on this thing. Photographing these little painted buntings was very, very difficult. The lighting was almost non-existent. It had just rained and there was a lot of cloud cover and it was later in the afternoon. So I had to do everything I could to get as much light on these birds as possible. You'll notice a slower shutter speed on all of these shots. Um, none of them were handheld. I was using my tripod because I was set up for video and I figured I would just go ahead and use it to capture some images. I use a Manfrotto heavy duty lens support and it worked out really well. You'll also notice the ISO jumps around quite a bit on these images. I use auto ISO. It's just one less thing for me to think about. Even with these higher ISOs, the images weren't too noisy and if there was any noise I was able to clean it up pretty easily in post. Green K is a really big place. The painted buntings are located more towards the entrance. Here's an aerial map of the location. The two red X's are where the bird feeders are and where the painted buntings were hanging out. But keep in mind that they're migratory so um, they're not there year round. These were seen on April 12th in 2017. And being that this place is so large of course, I'm going to go explore a little bit and see what I can find. I was here a little late in the year for the spring migration. Most of the birds had already moved on, but I did find this. This is the black-necked stilt. What a weird-looking bird, and I don't know why, but it reminds me of something uh, Jim Henson would create. Look at the legs on this bird. They're huge. It's easy to see how it gets its name, a stilt, because it looks like it's walking on stilts. I was able to get some really good shots of this bird as it cruised around searching for food in the mud. And now that I think about it, this is almost like the giraffe of the bird world. Look at those legs. They just, they're so strange looking. While I was getting pictures of this stilt, another big storm moved in and it started to rain. But it was actually pretty cool because this gigantic rainbow appeared right afterwards. And I was able to get some really cool shots. Check this out. Double rainbow all the way, man. This double rainbow was so large that I had to put the D500 away and get out the full frame D810. And the smallest or the widest angle lens I had on me was this 20 millimeter lens. And I could barely get the entire rainbow and all of the vegetation and the boardwalk in the shot. Green K is a really cool place and it gives you a lot of great opportunities to get pretty close to a lot of really incredible looking birds. But one of the really cool things about this place is it's really close, like maybe two miles from another excellent birding location called Wakadahatchee. So of course, I gotta go over there and check it out while I'm here. There's a big alligator down here and a bunch of babies. See the babies. There's the big one. The little one. It's really hard to see the baby gators in this footage, so let's do a close up. That's much better. Look at that awesome little reptile. These things were just hatched and mom was busy standing guard so nobody could get too close. Let's check out a few still shots where we can really see some detail on these little reptiles. What's the first thing you notice other than that really crazy looking eye? 
Look at the color of them. Those yellow and orange bands create the perfect camouflage because of all the weed material that they're actually sitting in is the same exact color. So predators like birds and fish and other animals like raccoons that would be eating these little guys, they have a hard time seeing them because they blend in so well. And this image was my favorite from the series. There's just so much detail in it and the water was a little bit clearer and there wasn't as much of a glare. If you look on the left, you can see a tail from another baby alligator that runs vertical in the image. It's got that really interesting orange and black banding pattern on the tail. And then, of course, the star of the picture is this baby alligator that's right in the middle. Its eye is just so incredible looking, but take a really close look at around the snout of the alligator. Do you see all those little black spots that are all around the face, around the mouth? Until recently, scientists weren't too sure what these actually were, but they've discovered that they are pressure sensors. So alligators are one of the ultimate ambush predators. They will often lay in wait for hours for something to get close enough, and then they will attack. Well, these little sensors help them determine when something is moving in the water close to them by detecting differences in pressure in the water. Without all those little sensors, alligators would have no way of knowing when something was within biting range. Alligators aren't the only reptiles you will find at Wakadahatchee Wetlands. There are also iguanas. This was a pretty big one, and it was laying out here in the grass getting some sun. I would have estimated it to be about four feet long, and these are invasive iguanas. They're not naturally found in Florida. They're here because they were either let go as pets or they came in on ships, and now they've kind of almost taken over South Florida. Another invasive species is this western or purple swamp hen. I'll joke around and call these swamp chickens. Look at their legs. They, they look like chicken legs. Eight of these birds escaped Miami's Metro Zoo in 1992, and now they're found as far north as West Palm Beach or close to West Palm where uh, Wakadahatchee Wetlands is. They are mostly vegetarians, but unlike other birds that mostly eat seeds, these purple swamp hens will eat the roots of these water plants, which kills them and prevents them from growing back, which can be a problem. If you couldn't see those big purple chicken-like legs before, you can really see them good now in these still shots I got. You can also see how this one is eating the roots on those weeds like I mentioned. The invasive species aren't the highlight of Wakadahatchee Wetlands. The amazing bird rookery is. It's one of the few places where you can get really close to a wide variety of nesting birds. Look at this family of storks here. They've almost outgrown the nest. And just for comparison, here's that same family three weeks earlier. Look how much they've grown in just three weeks. And then we have this tricolored heron family. Actually, I'm not sure if these are tricolored herons or green herons. Either way, they still look pretty cool. Check out this extremely young glossy ibis chick. This is my first time ever seeing a glossy ibis chick, and they look nothing like what I would have expected them to look like. And it was very difficult to get a picture of this one because there was a lot of tree branches in the way, but I managed to get it just right. And then you have this great egret family. I still think these great egrets, when they're little, look like some kind of weird puppet. And the chicks are always really, really mean to the adult. They will bite them on the head like this and just latch on and hold on to them because they're saying, give me some food, give me some food, but what a weird way to do it. I'm going to leave this video with my favorite picture from Wakadahatchee for that day. It's this adult egret standing guard over the chicks in a nest. Just the position of this bird is really odd and with all that breeding plumage sticking out. And I really like how the picture is framed by the uh, green leaves here. There should be a little bumblebee in the upper left hand corner. Go ahead and click on that and subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of videos planned. If you like the video, click the thumbs up and always leave comments. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, questions, whatever. I'll do my best to answer any questions and I love hearing what everybody thinks of the videos.